thank you very much uh, for giving us this platform uh, to make this presentation. Uh, I'd like to recognize the Honorable Minister, represented by the Honorable Minister of State, Chairman of uh, ETI, the Managing Director, my brother, Mr. Patrick, of uh, Ecobank Nigeria, the Group Managing Director, and uh, all other invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, admit me to stand in protocols already established. So I'll do a quick dive into my presentation, if it's ready. So essentially I'm going to speak on unlocking productivity and investment opportunities. Yeah. Uh, uh, investment opportunities. Oh, this one. Okay. Uh, investment opportunities uh, across value chain. You can see the link between productivity and investment. This is key. Without productivity, there will be no financing, there will be no investment. Factor productivity is key. You can do agri all you like, except you convert agri from culture to agri as a business. With the rules and logic of business, you can never be able to get private sector financing into Nigeria's agricultural opportunities. Therefore, whatever conversation you are going to have, you must talk of productivity, convince the banks that your business is productive enough to attract money. It's as simple as that. So, very straightforward. What are the investment opportunities? What is the approach to unlocking that productivity I mentioned and how to get the money in? And conclusion. Let's start with the investment opportunities. It's becoming a cliche already that we have land, we have water, we have labor, we have market. This is repeated and no uh, Our friend Dr. Nevin from PwC did talk about all those opportunities. Like uh, the president of African Development Bank said, nobody eats potential, right? You have got to apply human effort and investment to convert potential to economic reality. So we all know we have this. And I would like to make a quick side comment. Remember when Dr. Navy my making presentation, he did mention we have the land. But do we also agree that a large part of the arable land we have is really dead asset? It's not life. So you cannot convince Ecobank to put out that 70 billion into a dead asset. You have to bring life to that land as a dead asset. Can you go back? You go back. Go back. Back, back, back. No, no, the, the first No, no, no. Okay? Go on. All right, so we all know we have this, right? And so what happens next is that you have the factors that you need to do agriculture to agribusiness. Number two, what are the local and global opportunities that will be applied to your local opportunities to make sure you make money out of agriculture? I'm sure everyone in this room wants to do agri not because you love it, right? Because you want to make money out of it. <laughs> and it's not a coincidence that you find in this room the owner of the money, the guy that guarantees him to release the money, and the owner of the policy space, Minister of Central Agriculture. So you have an alignment of the stars in this room. Make maximum use of it. Now, globally, we all know these are the opportunity sets. We grow at a very rapid rate internally. Global population is also growing. Urbanization, we have how many capitals? At seven set capitals, right? Including Abuja. The taste of the food we have, more protein, more sugar, more meat, more hay, right? Somebody has got to feed that test that we have acquired. When we were younger in the rural areas, those tests were not in our mouths, right? But now we have got to this acquired test. We have got to supply it. How do we supply it? With food. How do we supply it? 
supported by the federal government to ensure that we eat what we grow and we grow what we eat. This times $2 billion opportunity is for us to take if we can do it right. And as mentioned, Africa itself by 2025 has been estimated that we're going to import up to 110 billion US dollars worth of food, feed, and fiber. Incidentally, we just signed the AFCTA, which makes this market available to Nigeria if we can do it right. And across the world, rapid population growth, it's understood that the entire food and agribusiness industry in the world is about $5 trillion. Foreign trade policies, the spark between China and the US, the EU CAB policies, a lot of global you know, misunderstanding. We in Africa and Nigeria can convert those things into opportunities for us to take. I keep telling my team, why do you have to move agricultural commodity across the Pacific to Southeast Asia or Southeast Asia? You can imagine the distance. Africa and Nigeria were a gateway. Get your goods across from the Atlantic through the Cape of Good Hope, Indian Ocean. You are kind of halfway to Asia. If we can get it right, why can't we supplant Brazil and Argentina in certain food commodities to the consumption centers of the world? The factors of production in Africa. If you want to serve the Gulf cooperation countries, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, Oman, Syria and the rest, all you need to do is a five-hour flight by cargo plane for high value commodities. From Kano or from the north or from anywhere in Nigeria, you can service their tents. They don't have the water, they don't have the other opportunities. We can fit in and service that market. They have the petrodollars, we have the food. So it's a natural fit if we can get our act together. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, if you heard what uh, Patrick said, the MD of ECOBAR, he did mention that the modern way of financing agriculture is not even to finance agriculture, it's to finance agribusiness. The moment you mention the word business, then the rules of business have to kick in and you have to break down what you mean by financing agriculture. Approach a bank and tell them that you want to get money to finance agriculture. I'm sure next time working with NASA, the bank will ask you, what business of agri do you want to get financing from? Every commodity we produce in Nigeria can be broken down to this logical segments. You don't really finance agriculture, but you finance fertilizer, you finance seed, you finance tractor, you finance geospatial mapping. Then, when you do that correctly, you can then go upstream to finance the actual farming that you all know, where you put seed into the ground, or semen into the female cow, or food into the uh, fish feed into the pond. That is the biological system. Beyond that, some of you will say, I'm not interested in this, to upstream. I'm not interested in upstream, it's too dirty for me. Let me play a role in the business. You can be a processor, whether a small scale processor, a medium level of, or a uh, you know, large scale processor. You can be in knowledge, you can be in warehousing, you can be in packaging, you can be a wholesaler. Finally, you have the industrial uh, processors who are also a veritable market. You have the exporters and all the merchants and logistics providers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is agribusiness. Did you see anything agriculture here? You might say upstream agriculture. I have no problem with that. But you cannot do successful agriculture without financing the upstream, midstream, and downstream. Because if you ask the government to pump in money here, what we are telling the banks is that, yes, create the loan. But by all means, ask the question, where is the money going to? Is the money coming back to these guys here? And when you produce, the guy in this field, is he also financed to be able to buy from you? And even if he finances from you, those that are in the export and the industrial markets, do they have the money to buy? So the, each component here must be marked the component before and after you. If you do that, the banks begin to follow their money. They can see clarity. They can see where their money goes. And in fact, guess what? A single bank can lock in all the actors in this particular commodity value chain, whether it's cocoa or maize or livestock, and do virtual transactions. Because you just follow the value. It's good for me as the guarantor because that means the bank will not follow my guarantee. 
and kick me out of business is good for the bank because they can follow the money from the comfort of their channel or, or of their offices. This is the future for agribusiness financing. Now, what I described are opportunity sets for everyone. All those opportunity sets in Nigeria cannot be harnessed until we are able to leverage four capitals. All along I've been mentioning what? Finance capital. But finance capital in and of itself will not work until we are able to acquire technology capital, equipment capital, and the brain capital to design a project, to execute a project, to control a project, and to deliver results. And that is why, for every agricultural project we do in Nigeria or the business, even by extension, our works programs, our petroleum industry, our telecoms industry, why do we keep bringing the white people from abroad? Why do we keep bringing the uh, Europeans and the Americans and the Australians and others and the Indians? Do they bring in anything other than their suitcase and their brain? That's what they bring. And that is why they get the money faster from everyone than us. Why? Because they are bringing in brain capital to do exactly what Ecobank needs to see to design a project and get the money. Ladies and gentlemen, our young people must be able to study agribusiness and be able to do project management to be able to deliver on projects. That way is easy for us. But the good thing is that finance capital can enable all that to be acquired. We don't want to have to wait for our lifetimes to be able to acquire this. These things have no border. Technology has no border. Equipment capital has no border. Brain capital has no border. What we can do to bridge the gap overnight, instead of incrementalism, we can do a step change. If we have the money, I can get the breast grant capital to start my project, but God help the guy that came from abroad, because I will plant my own young person under him to learn how to do it better. Okay? Equipment capital, we can import them. Technology capital is available, provided we have the money. So, how does NASA propose to, uh, to, 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 for, for all of us to take advantage? First of all, all finance and investment activities must be facilitated for increased productivity. And we in NASA have come to the realization you must build this aspect of four main principles. First of all, every commodity you want to work with to get money and finance in must have a market-driven approach. It must have a demand established. There must be a demand. Price must be determined. Quantity must be determined. Quality must be determined. Two. This commodity must be produced in the natural ecology where the commodity does best. I give an example. It makes no sense for someone to bring a proposal to me to do cocoa in yoga state. Does that make sense? But if a proposal comes to me for cocoa in Ondo state or Cross River, it ticks my risk management box. I can easily support that with a guarantee. All right? All our activities must include smallholder farmers because this is the reality of African agriculture. Corporate agriculture will not work for us. Otherwise, you will find that it's small islands of prosperity surrounded by huge seas of poverty. It must include the smallholder doing modern agribusiness. And every commodity must be approached in an integrated value chain format. And all this NASA will do it and layer our deals into this. Okay? So, a typical example is that Every commodity must have a demand in the market. It is that demand in the market that will tell the, uh, um, um, the, the primary producers what to produce. And those primary producers, we call farmers, must then make a demand on the kind of inputs they require. And then the midstream service guys must be there. So if you follow this logic, you can see the arrow this way and that way. Under the NASA's market to market strategy, all mechanization, inputs, and research for innovation must belong to this segment. And they must be mapped to primary production, primary processing, primary transport, and primary storage. Guys, do you know why we have 40 to 60 percent post harvest loss? Because of the problem in that middle segment. You can produce only one, but until you do primary processing in the field, while you stabilize your commodity, whether it's maize, or cassava, or tomato, you are going to lose value. And if you don't do that primary transport from the farm gate to primary storage, you lose value. 
Don't forget, I'm not even talking about the big industries in Lagos, Kotakot, Abuja, and Kano. The actual loss happens in the field. So there must be business solutions that solve the field problem before you feel the advanced value added processing industries. Therefore, what NASA did was to concentrate on what we call the 54321 commodities. And you can see almost all commodities belong to these five segments. Industrial commodities, export commodities, consumer commodities, controlled environment commodities, and integrated livestock commodities. Time is uh, not in my favor, so I'll just leave it at that. But for the interest of the young people, that controlled environment and culture commodities is key to them. What NASA is planning to do is to make sure every state capital in Nigeria with a test for fresh fruits, for vegetables, every single day. We do control environment agriculture, not greenhouse. Because in Nigeria, it's an anomaly to do a greenhouse in the tropics. Because otherwise, you cook your tomato and your vegetables inside the greenhouse. Greenhouses are made for temperate climates. So what you need is control environment agriculture while the temperature goes up. You can then chill it. And with solar energy and everything, you can actually do it. Imagine every step capital, Lagos, Kano, Abuja, you have young people having those greenhouses around, producing the vegetable for the day, the tomato for the day, the fish for the day, servicing the market for the day, making their money for that day. This is the future for young people. Agribusiness is driven by technology, which is very easy for us to finance. The second issue is that when I say smallholder inclusion, there is no way to scatter smallholders in Nigeria, which constitute between 80 to 120 million people, will get financed by any formal financing when they are scattered, disaggregated, unknown, and they are informal. It's not possible. Thanks to technology and geospatial mapping today, through satellite imaging, through drone flyovers, through big data analytics, you can actually convert these scattered business and usual smallholder farmers into organized sets of farmers that present single tickets for banks and investors to finance. And technology is there. With one flyover of high resolution satellites, these farmers without knowing they are actually aggregators. But except you create a blockchain methodology whereby each plot of land has a handshake to the next plot, there is no way I can convince the bank to create a 50,000 naira loan from Lagos to a remote farmer in Gold Musket. But if I can present a ticket of 150 million, 200 million, with organized and aggregated group of farmers, all right, it makes it easier to get them farmers. Like I said, technology has made it possible. And today, NASA is leveraging partnerships across the world. Microsoft, Vodacom, the European uh, Space Agency, and many other agencies to see how we can leverage geospatial mapping, whereby you don't have to have boots on the ground, not only to map the land, but to also to monitor the condition of crops as they grow so that a bank sitting in Lagos at the click of a key can know what is happening to their investment in terms of condition of the crops on the ground in any remote part of Nigeria. Technology has enabled that. So, this is the big picture. Remember, it's enabling finance and investment. The entire story of agribusiness in Nigeria can be captured here. Let's start for, with what you all know. You all know the processing industries in Lagos, in Aba, in Onitsha, in Botago, and Tano. They are there on the top right, servicing the domestic, consumer, domestic, industrial, and export market. But do you think you can have successful processing financing if you don't have successful primary production? You can't. In any case, the government says no more import. So somebody has to grow this. Am I right? Yeah. Right. So, again, you cannot have successful primary production except you are able to solve these fundamental baseline issues. You have to have technology to do successful, high productive primary production. You must have technology for harvesting, primary processing, primary transport, and primary storage. And don't be scared about it. Some of you can decide to say, we want to position ourselves in primary storage. Even using basic open technology, you don't have to build steel silos. There are technologies you can simply clear the ground, inflate your cocoa storage, remove the oxygen inside, put your grain inside, no living thing will survive because it's going to be asphyxiated. Okay? These are the kind of things young people can do. And it's a business and it can be financed. Some will say, I will do primary transport. What is there's no magic there. The tractor that you did here of plowing and harrowing, after the season of plowing and harrowing, just hook up to 10 trailers behind that tractor. 
It can move from location to location, loading all the bags of grain and moving out of rural area into primary storage. And you can only do that when you do successful primary processing as a business. Sorting, cleaning, drying, grading, bagging, and weighing. And so people will say, I'm not interested in anything, I will do primary processing. The basic thing I'm trying to say here, did you see anything like agriculture here? Now, what you see is business. And as you are doing this business, guess what? You are actually helping the entire integrated system. Two, you must have multiple cropping in Nigeria per annum. A loan taken for one year is a loan taken for one year. The bank doesn't care whether you multiply that loan three or four times. And the only way you can maximize that, bring down your interest. People talk about interest, interest. Interest is really not a thing to worry about, provided you can squeeze productivity out of every single line of your loan. And how do you do that? Try to see if you can do multiple cropping in a year, two or three times. The only way you can do that is to make sure you get gains. Especially in middle Nigeria, North Nigeria, even southern parts of Nigeria. Use that money, flog it well, bring every cobo out of it. And guess what? You don't have to wait for government to do for you. Under the national finance and investment model, together with the bank, there will be irrigation as what? As a service. Tractor as a service. We all know software as a service, right? Nothing stops us from doing all this high-level high -level capital investment as a service. The only condition is that the investor will come and take a guarantee from NASA, get financing, amortize your investment over a defined period of time. After three and a half years, you know you are in the profit zone because it's capital investment. You will continue to sell your water and get your rental value for water from the farmers because they will be captive to you. Lastly, and the most important thing that is of concern of converting dead land asset to live asset is what we call the small water based commercial and cultural side and services. All bankers in this room know about site and services for real estate, isn't it? Where a company does investment to clear the land, put the gutters, put the road, lay the cables, and allow other investors to come and build the houses. What is the difference between a house and a one hectare farm or a two hectare farm? In fact, a house is a dead asset as far as it's not. It's just a security. But a farm can produce value for you year in, year out for the rest of your life if you can maintain the soil science of it. So what we are proposing is a situation where big time land developers with specialized equipment, chain equipment, can actually take a forested area, which is the case in southern Nigeria, take a 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 hectare piece of land, get a, a CO4 for 25 to 30 years at least, clear that land, parcel it out, put a fence in, put technology in to make sure the soil science is maintained, and then we bring all the communities there and pass along that piece of land into one hectare, two hectare, three hectare piece of land. For a bank like EcoBank, they will find it easier to finance this kind of collective of farmers under one ticket. And in each cost of production for a farmer, guess what you will see there? Land rental. Very easy, very small, the farmer will not feel it. Feel it. But by the time you aggregate all the land rental and you put into the account of the land developer, he begins to amortize his investment. Over in our model, over a three and a half year period, this guy will have recovered the entire capital cost of investment. And for the next 25 years, he has nothing to lose but make profit. And everyone is a winner. That is the scarce model we're talking about. Finally, finally, <laughs> when I say geospatial mapping and using satellite technology to aggregate farmers, that is what we are doing. Our intention is to create what we call land banks. Land banks whereby a land bank of 5,000, 10,000, 15 to 20,000 and above, a lot of high net worth individuals in Nigeria have those lands from the north to the south. They have those lands and they want to do agriculture. The problem with us is this agriculture is not really a hobby if you want to make money out of it. You have got to remove the culture thing or a hobby thing and put the type of business. The only way you can do it, the elites of Nigeria, the obvious, the overs, the chief, the emirs, the ex governor the current governor, the minister, whoever you are, you have that land, hand it over to the land bank, you'll enter into agreement for 25 to 30 years, you get your rental value, yourself, your children, your grandchildren, great grandchildren, you get steady income, what happens, the land developer will move in, clear that land, parcel it out, put irrigation, and you have productivity going on. Who is the winner? The community, Nigeria, everyone. And you feel good. 
because we call it IPED, the Integrated Commercial Agriculture Investment Law. You would have paid your due to your community by just giving that land and making money out of it. Don't worry about the investment. We will bring in the investment. So, basically, people like Ecobank and all other banks, the only thing they want to hear, NASA, how do you want to risk my money if I put it into any of your proposals? These are high-level technologies. If I'm going to begin to explain this, it will take us the next 10 days for you to understand what we mean. Suffice it to say, to de-risk agriculture in Nigeria, after doing all that I've mentioned, you have got to leverage the latest science of geospatial mapping and geospatial This is a field in its own right. Two, you have got to have comprehensive agricultural mechanization. All of you think agricultural mechanization means plowing and harrowing. No, ladies and gentlemen. Everything to do with planting, planting, weeding, harvesting, drying, sorting, grading, bagging, weighing, primary transport, harvesting, storage, all this is comprehensive agriculture. Because if you do one, you don't do the others, you lose what? You lose value. And you cannot follow the money, the money will disappear. And I cannot convince the bank said I have that one. Three, you have got to have irrigation. And thank God you don't have to wait for federal government to put in a one billion dollar irrigation. Irrigation technology has moved on. Go to Bangladesh, go to India, go to Pakistan. Our team just came back from Bangladesh, where the World Bank is supporting solar power irrigation. Every group of farmers can have solar power irrigation system, water on demand. All right? You don't need to wait for Nepal because there's no Nepal. You just need energy to pump your water for you. Then you have to have comprehensive field monitoring. And don't forget, I said earlier, you don't have to put boots on ground to the field monitoring. Using N, um, um, NDVI maps through multispectral imaging, I can scan the entire Ogun State farms and find out which sector of farms in Ogun State is doing well in terms of certain proxy measures through multispectral imaging. This is high level science. Any crop that doesn't have greenness or chlorophyll is stressed either for water or pest or disease, therefore it is underperforming. Anywhere you see a certain metric where it's green, it tells you it's performing. Then you can concentrate your solutions on those underperforming areas in one big satellite image. This is high science itself. The PHP3 technology, remember, I told you any value chain that does not have planting technology, seed cleaning technology, harvesting technology, primary processing, primary transport, and primary storage, that value chain will break down and the money will not come back. That is necessary. Then you have to have technical assistance and structuring. Again, NASA is designed to spend its money to provide that assistance. Innovative insurance products. NASA is not stupid too. We give guarantees, but we also cover ourselves at the back end with insurance products. So we help the insurance industry to create brand new insurance products that is a multiple layer for us. We also create models of financing and financing frameworks. You don't have to do it yourselves. And then on top of it all, we provide our credit risk guarantee for any facility you take. Up to 75% of that facility, we cover it for you. You don't have to bring the CFO from Otako, Lagos, or Abuja. Our guarantee is sufficient. I'm sure Patrick will testify to that. Sure, you can take my guarantee. All right, so we're there. Uh, I think we're done, we're done, we're done. So in conclusion, this is what we're looking for. Value chains that are integrated. Bespoke financing solution per commodity, per location, per time of year all within a very robust risking tool set, and then must ensure that you have maximum returns guarantees. So all actors should take advantage, I'm referring to do Zoom, to ensure that we do this integrated approach. What is about NASA? A small baby of the Central Bank of Nigeria, in collaboration with the Federal Minister of Agriculture and World Development. All the CEOs of banks in Nigeria have, were participants, and they are actually counterparties in NASA today. You cannot ask for a better combination. We have Central Bank, the owner. We have Federal Minister of Agriculture, which owns the policy space within which we operate. Everything NASA does always is in line with the policy defined by the Federal Minister of Agriculture and World Development. And by the way, the Federal Minister of Agriculture and the Ministry is on the board of NASA. The banks are on the board of NASA. So you cannot have a better combination than that. And uh, finally, finally, we have done about 119 billion so far in lending against our guarantee. And it will interest you to know. The MPL, non-performing loan under NASA guarantee, is still less than 1% because of the cost of money. And these are some of the performance Finally, a lot of 
African government, the latest one being Angola, are looking for NASA to come and set up a similar system for them. Because the story of Africa is the story of smallholder farmer. No bank will touch the smallholder farmer except there's a big brother between finance and those smallholder farmers. So we have that footprint, and I'm happy to know that Ecobank is in about 35 countries. It's a natural fit for us to make a model that works here and replicate that model across the rest of Africa.